Now charging a customer isn't that difficult. As before you saw, well, Stripe has a good documentation and the same is true for charges on the back end. Here we should go on API libraries and there you will find different languages and how to implement Stripe. Now, as you see for Node.js, we should first install Stripe. So let's do this. I'll open up my console, skip out of my server here, and I will run npm install Stripe, though I will add the save flag here to also create an entry in the package.json file. With that, Stripe got installed and I'm ready to use it. And in order to use it, we check out the Node.js API docs. Now these uh, docs here are also great. They provide us detailed documentation about the different Stripe features. And I'm interested in charging the client here or the customer. Therefore, I'm going to charges. And then I can learn how to create a charge. Now as before here, we see our real key, not just any testing key. This is the key from our API settings, though this time, it's the secret key. That's the one we're using on the server. And since the server, unlike the JavaScript on our front end, isn't accessible by everyone, it's safe to use our publish, uh, excuse me, our secret key there. So I can simply copy this code here to make the charge on the server. Of course, I'll need some adjustment, but I'll come back to this. So I'll go back to my editor go to the routes index file and first I will create a new route. This should be a post route and I will also use slash checkout as a path here. This is the route I try to access when successfully submitting the credit card data form, the checkout form. Now in here, what I want to do is, well, I will paste in the code I copied from the Stripe page but before actually using this, I'll copy this check where I redirect if we don't have a card. So if we somehow got to this page in a different way. And thereafter, I'm recreating the card like we did before. And then I'm good to go to use Stripe. So this is the test private key, the secret key. And then here we're creating our charge. Now, as you can see, this is pretty self-descriptive. We got the amount and the amount that's important to understand is in dollar cents here or in cents, basically in always the smallest, uh, now my English is a bit limited, the smallest piece in each currency like cents and dollars or in Euro, it will also be cents. So if we have something that costs $40, it would actually have to be 4,000 cents here. That's important to understand. So therefore, the amount we use will be our card total price multiplied by 100 since our total price will be stored in full dollars. And the currency should be US dollars. Now the source here, this actually is just a dummy key. The source will be the token created by the Stripe JavaScript SDK, which validated the credit card. And have a look at the last video if this is unclear to you. Now, as you might remember, we're adding this token as a hidden input field here in our checkout.js file. And therefore, I can simply access it here on my request body and then Stripe token. Stripe token is simply the name of this hidden input field. So that is my Stripe token and you may make any description here, I'm just going to name it test charge. And with that, we are basically making the charge. But of course, we also need to handle possible results of the charge. And this will be called, well, as the description says here, well, whenever this is done, so asynchronously. Of course, I want to check if we got an error during the charge. In this case, I want to flash this error with the flash package we installed earlier in the series. And I will store it in an error object here. And what I want to store is the message which Stripe will provide for me. And then I want to, let's say, redirect the user to the checkout page. And I'll come back to displaying this error in a second. If we are successful though, 
I also want to flash something. I want to flash something into a success object here. And I want to say successfully bought product, something like that. I also then want to set my card equal to null, so clear the card. And I want to redirect to the index page. And I will do something about displaying this success message in a second as well. But first I want to talk about something else. You might have noticed that I'm resetting the card. I might have gotten my money, but I'm not sending my customer the book he bought, right? Well, that's something which will come in the next videos because as you might have also noticed, we never request the user to log in. The user is able to, well, charge his own credit card anonymously. So that's a great business model for us. We get money, we don't have to send anything and we don't even know who bought it besides the information which gets sent with the charge to our Stripe account. So that certainly may take some improvement, but for now I'm leaving it like this to show how to make a charge before adding other pieces to it. So first let me get back to displaying the error and the success message here. Let's start with the error. I will display this on the checkout page. I already got my charge error place here, but I need to, well, adjust this a little bit. For one, I only want to attach this hidden class here if we don't have an error. Now, since this can now also be sent from the server, I need to change the way this view is rendered. So I will use handlebars here, a little if statement, and check if I got no errors, in which case I would add the hidden class. Otherwise, well, this will not get attached. And here I conditionally also want to set a text, which should be error message here, for example. Now, currently I'm not sending this. So back in the get checkout route here, I need to add these two pieces to this function. I will first create a new variable called error message here, which should be request flash into an error object and then the first element in the array. And why do I access this like this? Well, the connect flash package, which we're using for that, will basically store multiple items into this error object or into an array in this error object here. So it will basically use this error object here as kind of a map where we have keys and values, the values being the error messages or the messages in general, and the keys being, well, like array keys, zero to, well, highest number of messages you stored there. Now I know that I will only store one error here. That's the one I'm flashing here when we got an error. And I'm retrieving it by accessing the first element or the element with the key of zero. So that gives me the error. And with that, I'm able to pass this error message to my view. And I also need to pass the no error field here or no error variable, which is just a check if error message is actually anything else or is not null. So this will be true if we got no errors, otherwise it will be false, which is the behavior I want, because if we do have errors, then I want to hide this hidden class or I don't want to use this hidden class so that the error message being output here is clearly visible. I hope that's clear how that works. And if I do get an error through my front end credit card validation here, I'm overwriting this anyways, which is the behavior I do want. So that's the error case. Let's also handle the success case. So in the index.hps file, that's the file I will redirect to if we're successful here at the end, redirect to just slash is the index.hps file where I will land. Well, here I want to add new code at the very top of this file. I want to add a bootstrap class or bootstrap row here, and then just some bootstrap styled a div here, which is nicely centered and of course styled is according to your needs.
I will add an ID which I will call success here, for example, or a div with an ID of success, I mean. This should also get some bootstrap classes alert, but this time alert success, not alert danger as the error div had. And I will also add a bootstrap, excuse me, a handlebar uh, if statement here to only show this or to add this hidden class here if we have no message because then of course I don't want to show this. So this is the similar logic as with the error case before and I will make sure to pass no message in a few seconds ago. Uh, I had so in a few seconds well it's been a long day so in the case that we do have a message well I want to output it here of course so pretty similar to the error case just with success and of course I need a final adjustment in my routes file now here at the top route where I load my index page I want to make sure to show such a success message message if I do have one so I will set my success message to be well the message I get from my flash storage here I will access the success object of course the first element as well and this will be the message I store in this flash storage right here success and I only store one element that's why I only need to fetch one element here then I can return this here. So I will set my success message equal to success message. Of course, make sure that your key names here match the names of the variables you're using here on your view. And like before with the errors, I also need my no messages field here, which should be well, the inverse of success message. So basically this will be true if we have no messages and it will be false if we have at least one message. So no messages. Here there should also be no messages if I use it as a key name in the routes file. And with that, that should be good to, well, to work. Let's try if everything works as intended by restarting the server, going over here, and reloading the, the page here. And well, one thing that doesn't work is that I see this alert field here. That should be the case. Let's see why that happens. Well, the reason is very simple. This should be no error, not no errors, since, well, I have no error as a key name here. I was talking about the importance of naming this right a few seconds ago. So yeah, here you go. So if I reload this now, looks much better. Let me enter some dummy data here, Chris, and I will fetch a valid credit card um, number. Again, using the one from the getting started example here. Enter this here, enter a valid date in the future and a free number, a free digit code here. Click buy now. And looks pretty good. We are forwarded to the front end. You see successfully bought product. One thing which is not working is that the cart is still there. So we need to work on that. But if we have a look at the Stripe backend now, go back to the dashboard, refresh this page. We should see that uh, some charge was made. Yeah, looks good. We made a charge, 62 euros. which looks a bit too much if we're charging $50 here, to be honest. Oh, total. So yeah, yeah, 43 euros, that's fine. So the only thing that's not really working is that the shopping cart isn't cleared. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, the reason for this is that, of course, I need to clear my session cart here. So request session cart. So if I save this and restart my server now, reload my page it's still there of course so I will just quickly charge myself again good thing is it's uh, just testing charge or charges charges right so whoops that's the wrong year that won't work so let's try this again by now we're getting forwarded and the shopping cart is gone no items in cart great so 
Well, that really was a lot of work, but we got a working basic shopping cart. Now, of course, important feature is still missing. We're not storing the user information. We're not requesting the user to log in. We're not storing in our database. We couldn't send the products the user bought. But hey, we get the money, right? We got what we wanted. The charges are working. We're able to validate the payment data the user entered and we're able to actually make a charge through Stripe. As you see, it worked instantly here. So that has been a major step. In the next videos, of course, I'll focus on actually forcing the user to log in, storing user information so that in a real application, you would be able to then send whatever the user bought to the user. See you in the next videos. Bye.